In the past 90 days, I've spent a total of 86 minutes on any kind of internet, and most of that time was spent updating my own blog and video channel. To say the digital detox helped my mental hygiene would be an understatement. I'd say it was nearly a power washing to my mind. We are the first generation of people subjected to 24-hour news and constant comparative self-analysis through social media. Is it any wonder we are also the most medicated? I've been working on my own mental realms for a very long time with a serious upsurge in effort since the passing of my beloved husband. A large reason for me experimenting with the nomad life was to see if abject simplicity and a return to nature couldn't help my overall well-being. After a year on the road, I can certainly say it has, yet I am naturally an ongoing project. Gautama the Buddha's very first sentence in the Dhammapada is, All that we are is the result of what we have thought. It is founded on our thoughts. It is made up of our thoughts. End quote. If we're an amalgamation of our thoughts, but naturally most of our thoughts are not technically ours, and we can collect and choose them, we can thusly choose who and how we are. I've been taking this time that I have without all the pressure of the world and the media and advertising to really be selective and cleansing of my thoughts. And here are some ways that I practice what I call mental hygiene. Keeping a very minimal amount of things has been specifically clearing. I've never identified with objects, so to be without things is no hardship. Minimalism, as I see it, is liberation from the unnecessary. There's a really wide divide between what is actually needed and what is simply wanted. And I think it's totally fine to live a life abundant and fulfilled wants. But for me, it became a burden to think about and maintain all the things I didn't really need. And it certainly didn't provide lasting joy. Keeping what I do have streamlined and organized gives my mind less to focus on and think about. Simplicity and cleanliness in a space allows my brain to not have to register and interpret all the clutter. Hiking in nature, particularly long, grueling hikes, are like moving meditations. The longer and more challenging and uncomfortable the hike, the more I'm able to clear my mind and wash away negative gunk. Hiking and being around true nature is like liquid plumber to clogged psychological piping. Living off-grid in what modern Western society would undoubtedly consider borderline barbaric conditions means that everything I do takes longer. I boil water to take a warm shower outdoors. I compost my waste. I eat all of my meals at home and eat what is in season locally. My activities are largely dependent on the weather instead of what I want. The slowness of my physical life allows my mind to slow down in kind. Each mundane task gives room to watch my thoughts and choose them. Practicing this now, I don't think I had the mental strength to practice such mindfulness living in a fast-paced major metropolis. It makes sense why most aesthetics live in the mountains.
being alone has been the best way to have the quiet to hear what that constant, uninterrupted dialogue we all have inside is saying. The thoughts we don't always recognize can often be the most steering ones in our lives. When there was so much distraction and stimuli from commerce, traffic, advertising, and the voices of others persistent in my life, it was nearly impossible for me to hear my inner dialogue, let alone have control over it. The quiet of living in solitude in nature has been like an amphitheater for my inner speech. In addition to what I discard, what I allow to come into my mind has been crucial to its hygiene. In our tech-focused era, I think it's easy to analogize our minds to the most advanced a computer. It did, after all, take human mind to think up the computer and all the programming. As such, like with computers, garbage in, garbage out. Considering this seriously, I have seriously altered what I allow to be downloaded so to speak, as far as I have control. Naturally, we don't have control over everything we see and hear, which is why strong foundational programming is so important, along with frequent sweepings for viruses. The most hygienic mental practice is naturally meditation, which I can now sit in for hours. At first, My restless temperament made it nearly impossible to just sit without feeling like I ought to be doing something important to justify my existence. It's taken a few years of practice to just sit and be still, but the investment has been literally life-altering. I am the first to admit that I don't know everything. (laughs) Far from it. So if you have any really great practices that you practice that help to aid in mental hygiene, please do share them with others in the comments below as I think we are in a day and age where a little mental hygiene can go a long, long way. Naturally, none of this is philosophy, but rather just my experiential principle. My hope is that maybe something that has been positive in my experience could be positive in yours. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.